In this lesson, we're going to create the player prefab. All right, so to get started, let's go ahead and create a new quad right here on our scene. So I'm going to select the start piece right here and hit F. And then we're going to go to Game Object, Create Other, and Quad. Okay, so that's going to create that right here in the scene. And then with this quad, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees just like we've been doing. And then I'm going to set this up a little bit higher on the track. I'm going to set this at 0.5 on the track. All right, so now that we have this mesh, I'm going to call this player mesh. There we go. And with the player mesh, let's go ahead and remove the mesh collider. And let's add a component. Let's do physics. And we're going to use the capsule collider um, on this. Now, um, actually, let's not add the capsule collider to the mesh itself. Uh, we want to actually create a game object that gets the coordinates um, aligned with the world axis. So by rotating the quad, you'll notice that the X is pointing in the right direction, but Y is now pointing forward in the Z, and then the actual Z is pointing down. We're looking at the local axis here, okay, and you can see that right here. So this is global. That's what we want it to look like, but in the local, it's forward, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select that player mesh object. Let's hit F to frame in on it. Okay, and then we're going to go to Game Object, Create Empty, and you'll see that the axis is now pointing up, even in the local. And let's call this PFB underscore player car. There we go. Now with this player car object, let's go ahead and drag and drop the player mesh onto that. And then let's select the PFB player car, and let's add a component. And we're going to add in the physics capsule collider. And we want this to be facing down the Z direction. And I want my radius to be 0.4. Okay, so it's going to look something kind of like this. Now we also want to add a material to this. And I'm going to use the, uh, the base material. Now, looking at all these, we don't actually have a car material. So let's go ahead and create one. We're going to create material. And this one I'm going to call car underscore mat. There we go. Let's make sure that it's set to unlit and transparent. Uh, we can do transparent or transparent cutout. Um, let's go ahead and do transparent cutout for right now. Now the difference is that it, the cutout gives you this alpha cutoff that you can kind of cut off the edges if you need to on the alpha of the, uh, the sprite sheet. Uh, we've done that same thing with all of these. Now I did switch over the barrier and the plant to just use transparent. So if you select both of those, you can go to unlit, transparent, just like that. Okay. So let's just use cut off or cut out for this one and let's apply the texture. Now with the car, we're not going to do anything with the tiling or the offset. We're actually going to use a script to do all of that for us. And this is going to help us during the animation process of our sprites, which we'll get on in on in just a little while. So let's drag and drop that material onto that object. And now we have our player car with the box collider set up, or I'm sorry, our capsule collider set up and our player mesh. So now that we have this set, uh, we want to make a prefab for it. So I'm going to right click, create prefab. And let's do PFB underscore player car. Drag and drop that object onto that prefab, and you'll see that it's been updated right up in here. And now we're ready to go. Now that we have our prefab player car set up, let's go ahead and move on into our next lesson where we're going to begin scripting out the player movement of our player car. So I'll see you then.